Okay, welcome. Welcome here. It's a challenge to speak about nursing home care for so young people here around. So um, nice that you want to listen to my talk. And um, I want to talk about um, De Hoge Wijk. And that's a little village nearby in Weesp, so not so far, 20 minute drive. Um, and we are a nursing home. So there are people living with severe dementia. And you are all young. And I'm curious who knows somebody, a relative, family, who is living in a nursing home right now, who have some experience. And also, oh wow, and some experience with a relative with severe dementia. Okay, so that helps me a little. So maybe you understand why I'm talking about a normal life for people who are living in a nursing home. Because we know dementia, it's a real challenge for you in the future. People are getting older, aging, so uh, dementia is real an issue. And it's a disease. And it's not so nice that you forget things that you don't remember, your parents or your children, so some challenges. But we can influence that. Uh, what we saw in a nursing home, we, were an old, we had also an old nursing home, what we saw is that we are influencing those residents. We are confusing them by locking the doors. If you are living in, with dementia in a nursing home, can you leave the ward? Or is the locked door or not? And what do you want when you are old? That's important. That's the question tonight. What do you want when you are old? So we can influence the behavior of people who are living with dementia. And somebody with dementia needs a situation he can overlook. This is really confusing people with severe dementia. I have only light dementia, so I can handle this. But if you have, sorry, severe dementia, this is confusing. Right, uh, red lights, a lot of people, some weird noises. So then you have some challenges, some behavior problems. We can influence that by providing an environment people recognize, where they feel at home, comfortable, and a ward with a locked door and nice weather outside confuses people, residents, you. If you see it's nice weather, you go to Vondelpark and have fun and enjoy the sun. And if you are living at the top floor of that nursing home, why are always the dementia departments at the top floor? You cannot leave, you see the nice weather, you want to enjoy the weather, and it's not possible, but it is. We have made a small village. We talked about a neighborhood, but now we are known as the dementia village. A village with 23 houses where you can live your own life with five other people. Not five other people, no, five other people with the same ideas, lifestyle, same ideas on life with normal streets, so you can leave and you can go outside and enjoy the sun or enjoy the rain also. It's also, that's also quality of life, that you feel the rain. Most of the people who are living in a nursing home right now in the Netherlands come never outside again. The average time people are outside is 90 seconds per day, and we should be ashamed of that if you talk about quality of life instead of only quality of care. They all need support of professionals, caregivers, some doctors. So they cannot live at home because that's the best place to stay. That's the place where you feel comfortable, at home in your own house with your own nice decoration, atmosphere, maybe relative you like. But if that's not possible anymore, if you need 24 hours, seven days a week care, you have to move on a certain point to a nursing home. But then, at that moment, you still, I'm convinced, you still want to live your own life with your own choices every day. And you want to go outside when it's nice weather or when it's raining. So and that's possible. We are a nursing home funded by the national health system in the Netherlands. So it's not a story about money. More money is not a solution. No, it's about how you spend your money. So just... A a square, this is 
a big square. And we thought about a square nearby in Amsterdam also. Just outdoor areas are important. You can leave your house and you can walk through a park, a little Vondel Park. We call this Viva Park. And you can enjoy a fountain where you can sit. So a lot of outdoor areas are really important when I'm talking about a nursing home. So the outdoor areas are equally important than the indoors, than the wards. There, is, there are no wards, but in this village. And it's important that you can decide every day what you like, what you want to do. This gentleman, Mr. Van A, is living in a more traditional uh, house, traditional lifestyle. He wants to smoke a cigar outside. So that's modern, smoking outside. He's already used to smoke a cigar outside. So he can decide to leave his house and smoke a cigar over here. Or this lady was living in the well-to-do lifestyle. We called it Gooi uh, lifestyle because Het Gooi is nearby. <coughs> she's not reading the newspaper, she's reading the telegraph. And that's also important. Details matter. And she's sitting in the sun. She's, she read her newspaper every day when it was possible in the sun. That's her own choice. Nobody's prescribing or saying that she has to read the newspaper or that she has to be stay inside. So your own choices, making your own choices during the day, that's important. So you need an environment which feels attractive, where you can search your spot you like, where you can discuss if this art is ugly or nice. That's important, that's quality. Discuss meeting other people outside on the street with your severe dementia. You are living in a nursing home. You are looking at pictures of a nursing home, the same nursing home where your relative can live. And walk around. And we have two different floors, but also at the, the second floor, the first floor, you can sit outside in the sun if you want, and you can walk over the bridge you saw and walk through the whole village. That's important. And you can enjoy this fountain at the theater square. A lot of people say, wow, a fountain in a nursing home, that's dangerous. They have all severe dementia. They will jump in, commit suicide immediately. But we are showing that people with severe dementia are just human beings. They are not mad. And if you provide a normal environment, people with severe dementia act more normal. They still can walk around and they don't jump in this fountain. But in society, we focus on risks and on fallings. And we all say it's dangerous a fount fountain in a nursing home. Or people can fall outside. Or maybe they want to eat a kilo of those plants over here. They are poisonous, but they are not doing that. And that's what we are showing. Where's my time? Oh, it's over there. Uh, so going on a bike tour is important. Using your muscles. Or simple things as the possibility to make your own sandwich. You are not moving in on a certain date and telling the caregiver that you like a sandwich with cheese and you get your sandwich with cheese for the upcoming 10 years. No, you make your decision every day and you can make it yourself. And that's important because this lady is using her muscles. She's using her brain. And you eat at a normal table set with five other people, not 15. That's not normal. So especially for people with severe dementia, they cannot handle all those noises and all those other people. So now it's proven at the University of Wageningen, eight years ago, that they eat better when you sit at a table set of six. But that's logic. So a lot of things what we are doing are where we started 20 years ago just by common sense, thinking, what do you want when you are old? So a normal kitchen design, in this case, the homey, more traditional people, Dutch potatoes are Im important, vegetables, not so fancy meals, no uh, cultural art, that's not interesting, that's for the cultural lifestyle, for this lifestyle, for instance. So people with the same interests are living together. So you can have a nice chat, or over a specific subject. You share something. You share the same values, the same norms. So it's not one size fits all what you 
have normally in a nursing home. So you have something in common. Yes, you have all severe dementia, so now you have to live together. No, you are still an individual with your own preferences. That's important. So different designs. This is more colorful for the cultural lifestyle. They traveled a lot. They like to discuss the art, etc., etc. And you have your own room, your own private space that tells a lot about the person who you really are. And you can bring along, of course, whatever you want. But you can also go to the restaurant for a drink. So you leave your house <laughs> and you go to the restaurant for a nice drink. That's normal. So we have our own restaurant where you can have a drink, a beer. There are, not in the Netherlands, but in the other countries, nursing homes where it's forbidden to drink alcohol. But for some people, for my mother, that's really important part of life. So <laughs> and not only living together or sitting in a chair, reading the newspaper. No, it's more. It's about meeting other people for some. They want to enjoy clubs, enjoy classic music, <laughs> go to the swimming pool. So we have a lot of clubs, a social life. So not only living in one house or on a ward. No, you leave your house. You have to walk through the rain, sun, outdoors, and you meet other people with the same interest. For the painting club or the classic music club. Or you can go to the theater like this. So we can, uh, the next step can be in the Hogerwijk, 120 people. So the residents who are living there meet you, younger people. And that's normal life. That's eh, social life. Social contacts are really important. So you can eat, have lunch, you can go to the pub, you can go to the pub for the folk music. You know André Hazes, <laughs> or maybe <laughs> Wilke Alberti. She is famous for our, not our, that's institutional talk, for the residents. So they enjoy her music. And you enjoy that music in the pub or in the theater. Not classic music in the pub. That's confusing. Or you go to the supermarket for your groceries. That's a normal activity. Everybody goes to the supermarket. So we have a supermarket. So you have to leave your house. But first you discuss about what's for dinner tonight. That's the first question my children ask me. So you can discuss about that. That's normal life. And then you go and do your groceries. You use your muscles again. You stay in a better shape. So people with severe dementia can do a lot. It's all together with volunteers of care professionals, of course. But you can enjoy life. So what we do, we transform the medical model where we focus on your illness. You have severe dementia. That's why you are in this nursing home to a more social relational model. Yes, all those people who are living in this nursing home, in the Hogerwijk, need medicine, have severe dementia, cannot live at home alone anymore, need support to cope with daily life. But social context, a normal life, what you really think is important in life, that's the most important part. So a little example. You know Sylvester Stallone and Woody Allen. They have the same age, the same income, the same profession. They are both men. But imagine they were living together at that <laughs> ward with that locked door and say, now you have this in common, severe dementia. Enjoy the rest of your life. You can imagine that that would cause a lot of problems, challenges. And <coughs> but that's what we do with our own parents. So look at the lifestyle. Look at the people who are living in the village. And also in Dutch society or European society, there are different people with different habits, different norms, different ideas on life. So if you live in the Hoogwijk, we look carefully at your lifestyle and you are going to live in a lifestyle group with people with the same ideas on life. So we have a little less challenging behavior, less irritations, less negative stimuli. Eh? This you, you enjoy the same uh, habits. This lady likes to do the laundry. So we do all the laundry inside, just like a little household. She still can do the laundry. That's what she did for 60, 70 years. So we don't say to her, please be seated. We will take care of you. You have to do nothing anymore. 
because after two days, you're not coming out of that chair anymore. You're not using your muscles anymore. So we invite her to take care of the laundry. And if she d does the laundry a little, that's okay. It's not about cheaper or money. No, it's about doing something nice during the day. So different styles, different um, decoration, and this is more the urban lifestyle. Like in Amsterdam, I don't like this lamp, <laughs> but it's typical for the Jordaan. So they feel more comfortable. And this is not a plate, but if you look very carefully, you see little flowers on this plate. That's important. So not white plates for everybody. So they recognize the plate, so they eat a little better. And they like to help with setting the table. Or just helping with peeling potatoes. And potatoes are really important for the traditional homey people. They are not happy when you serve Chinese food or Italian food. They just want those potatoes, vegetables and meat. So serve it. And not so fancy interior, uh, more traditional. That's where they feel comfortable. And we cannot do this without caregivers. They are around to support the resident, professional caregivers, to support the residents to cope with daily life, to structure their life, to invite them to do normal, to do the normal things they like. So professional caregivers, and is this all scientifically proven? We just started with common sense. And now, after 20 years, it's proven that exercises is Exercise is important. And the, the, the government encouraged everybody to make moving plans again. So we make, made, before that, a village where you have to, to do something. Fresh air is important. Daylight is important. If you sit here in this dark room for a day, I think it's interesting to observe your behavior then. And so daylight is really important. View of nature, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So uh, a lot of the things we are doing just by common sense are now proven. So there are three guiding principles, deinstitutionalize, transform and normalize. So not focus on care and a nurse in a white uniform, just integrate everything in a caregiver who supports the resident, who cooks a meal, the caregiver cooks a meal and drinks coffee and also give medicine, integrated approach. And she or he is always around knows the residents really well, the background, the family, everything. And not an, an economic kitchen, but just cook that meal in that house. In 23 houses, we are cooking every evening a meal, a different meal, because the smell is important. So you know as a resident, you know that you are going to eat. Maybe you help. That's important. So not a meal served on a plate. So this is what you choose me, had chosen two weeks ago. So and not a warehouse, but just a supermarket where you go for groceries. And this looks maybe nice, or maybe this, you think, oh, that's normal. It's not necessary. Huh? Smaller groups are important. Six residents living together, not 15. That's not normal. You are used to live together with 10 students maybe, but later you have your own family, five, six people. That's what you where you feel comfortable. Outdoor areas are important, and just a normal table set, etc. Just a normal life. So you can live the life you love. Thank you.